Good evening. I'm Caroline McCormick, Chair of the Achates Philanthropy Foundation, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Achates Philanthropy Prize and to welcome poet and librettist Kartika Naya as our host this evening. Good evening, Kartika. This evening is a moment of reflection of all we have lost in this time, but also one of celebration of what has been achieved, and most of all, one of looking forward to what comes next and the role that art and culture can play in a world we all want to live in. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening, including the judges of the prize, the prize ambassadors, the trustees of the foundation, our sponsors, Achates Philanthropy Limited, and our supporters, the Paul Hamlin Foundation, and our host, Home Manchester. And a very special welcome to all of the 121 arts organisations from across the UK nominated for the 2020 prize, especially the 24 organisations included in the regional showcase will be finding out this evening which of them will be accelerating as the national showcase of outstanding work. Welcome to you all. I'd like to begin with a few moments of reflection, if I may, and would like to specifically mention Jamie Wildman, who was nominated by the Young Vic for the 2019 Achates Philanthropy Prize Individual Award and who passed away in the spring of this year. Kartika, it's a joy to have you with us this evening. Could you tell us a little more about the 2020 Achates Philanthropy Prize, please? Thank you, Caroline, for inviting me to be a part of the Achates Philanthropy Prize ceremony this year. It's a year that marks the fifth edition of the prize. And it's an important number, five. It is that cusp when suddenly fingers are not independent, isolated digits. They form a fist. They form the prehensile, most dexterous part of the hand. It's a number which signifies greater purpose and stability in the life of organizations and initiatives like this one. A number that injects a spring in our step and a, and a joy in pronouncing the word itself. In a normal year, this would call for a major celebration. In a normal year, we would have probably all been together under one roof, cheering happily, loudly. In a normal year, there would have been handshakes and hugs the ability to see each other beyond mosaics on a screen, the ability to touch. But 2020 is not a normal year. It's a year that's been marked by loss and grief, by the erasure of all the familiar comfortable markers of contact and communication. The loss of lives, the grief of that loss. Almost all of us have lost loved ones near and far away. For all too many of us, there's been the risk or the, the reality of the loss of a livelihood, a roof, the loss of support systems. In these dangerously troubled times, philanthropy has proven more vital than ever. A philanthropy that hearkens to the original meaning of the word, as used in the early 17th century, I learned, which was when it first became current. Goodwill to fellow members of the human race, especially active effort to promote human welfare. That's how the Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it. Philanthropy that has been beneficial not only to the receivers, but the givers, essential to our individual and collective well-being. Because, as we're going to recall now, these projects allowed people to reconnect with each other, to reach out, to be that living link in a time when we have literally never been so isolated as a species. In a normal year, in previous years, the Akiti's Philanthropy Prize asked organizations to nominate individuals or companies that supported the initiative for the first time. 
But this year, in response to the pandemic, the organizers decided to remove the competitive element and instead ask its fabulous regional ambassadors to nominate 15 organizations in each of the eight regions of the United Kingdom as case studies of the work they've done in supporting their communities as testimonies of how the communities in question have responded to that work. The aim is to show to showcase some of the ways in which art and culture have impact and value, not just economically, something that has all also been demonstrated time and again. Perhaps it takes a pandemic to remind the larger world that art and culture are not a luxury for a certain section of society. They're essential components to all our lives as sentient beings. They're crucial to the development of thought and curiosity the fulcrum of emotional stimulus, the vector of that vital factor, imagination, perhaps let's call it wonder, which allows us to transcend the horror of some realities. Art and culture remind us that there are others who felt what we feel, who struggled as we do, have overcome as we hope to. This then has been the aim for the fifth edition, a celebration instead of a competition a celebration of human ingenuity and solidarity in a time of extreme distress. So from those 121 organizations, 15 each for seven regions, and thanks to a dead heat in Scotland, 16 there, uh, the ambassadors and teams of the foundation selected three in each region to create a regional showcase, um, as you can see on the slides here. And tonight, we're going to announce and celebrate the national showcase of eight organizations, one per region, organizations which represent the outstanding work delivered by arts entities across the UK, which have in varied and wonderful ways provided invaluable help to individuals and communities through the tumult and trouble of this year. There will also be um, an announcement of eight bursaries of one day of support from the ambassadors to an arts organization in each region. Um, Sarah Pirissa Maguire, Ambassador Trustee of the Foundation, will kickstart this event by presenting the eight Akatis Philanthropy Prize bursaries. It is my privilege to request Sarah to take on that happy task. Good evening, all, and thank you, Kartika, for opening the evening with those very special and beautiful words. And hello again to those of you who are joining us from today's earlier conference. I'm Sarah Carissa Maguire, and as Ambassador Trustee to the Katie's Philanthropy Foundation, I'm pleased to begin the evening by announcing the 2020 recipients of the Katie's Philanthropy Prize bursaries. We launched the bursaries for the first time in 2019, providing targeted and specialist support to five brilliant organizations who have been nominated for the prize in order to guide them in specific areas of their organizational development through strategy and fundraising. Following last year's inaugural bursary program, in 2020, we're increasing the number of bursaries from five to eight, one in each region. Each of these bursaries equates to one day of specialist in-kind support from one of our prize ambassadors. This part of the program is, of course, equally as exciting and important as the announcement of the final showcase. And we very much look forward to embarking on this work alongside the bursary winners. Now, without further ado, I'm pleased to announce the following organizations as recipients of the Akatis Philanthropy Prize bursaries. Firstly, Echo Echo Dance Theatre Company, Derry, London Derry, Northern Ireland. Feast Cornwall, from the Southwest. Furman Woods Contemporary Art, from Northampton in the Midlands. Hospital Field Trust in Angus, Scotland. Islington Mill in Salford in the North. Mostyn in Landudno, Wales. Museum of the Home in London, Greater London. And finally, People United in Canterbury in the Southeast. 
all eight represent organizations who are already doing great work and with whom we want to support in going even further. We look forward to working with each of them over the next six months and we thank them for all their valued work. Thank you, Sarah. Once more, congratulations and thank you to all eight bursary recipients for your extraordinary work. Now we move on to the national showcase. I'd like to invite Caroline McCormick to announce the names of the first four organizations who have been selected to join so we can applaud the remarkable projects they launched and the impressive results they achieved. Thank you, Kartika. As we're hosted by Home Manchester this year, and because we believe that culture unites rather than divides us, we're going to start with the North of England, announcing the regional showcase and nomination that has joined the national showcase for the North. I would like to thank our regional ambassador, Eleanor Sudgett, for her great work in compiling the nominations for the North of England. 15 outstanding nominations. And the three nominations shortlisted for the North of England Regional Showcase are 20 Stories High, Northern Ballet, and The Reader. 20 Stories High was nominated for its doorstep theatre piece, Knocking On. 20 Stories High were keen to address and support local people. We want to give audiences an experience they will never forget, something that connects and reflects the times we're living in, but one that also offers comfort and hope. Secondly nominated was Northern Ballet. For Northern Ballet at Home Online, which includes articles, films of staff undertaking musical challenges, interviews, living room workouts, and clap for NHS performances. The aim to emphasize the emotional message of their fundraising ask to help protect our people and our work was well received by all. And finally, the reader. For the reader at home, a wide ranging programme of activity. At a time when many people were looking for well being support, distraction, and meaning, the staff, the team, and volunteers at the Reader provided and continue to provide a regular programme of video readings, online events, and reading resources. And I'm delighted to be able to announce that 20 Stories High are the Northern case study to join the National Showcase. When restrictions on outdoor performances eased, 20 Stories High took to the streets of Liverpool, principally Toxteth and L8, with a unique piece of interactive doorstep theatre. Knocking on, is an entertaining and poignant reflection on lockdown through the eyes of a young Liverpoolian woman. Part scripted performance, part improvised interaction, it relies heavily on audience participation, to which one attendee noted, it helps this is Liverpool, where strangers are used to swapping life stories at the bus stop. The performance enjoyed a six week run and has inspired the creation of a number of bespoke soon to be launched programmes to highlight mental health issues in the local community. The judges were moved by 20 Story High's journey to realising the power of their art to connect their communities and the comfort and hope it offered. Many congratulations to 20 Stories High and to all the nominees on their remarkable achievement. And from the north of England, we travel to Wales, where all the regional showcases are a truly inspiring reminder of how language, movement and performance 
can foster mental and physical well-being even during a widespread crisis. Caroline, may I request you to announce the Welsh case study to be included in the National Showcase? Absolutely, Kartika, it would be my pleasure. And I'd like to start by thanking our regional ambassadors, Laura Drain and Jane Lalaji for their great work on researching the nominations for Wales. Thank you to you both. The three nominations which compose the Welsh Regional Showcase are Dornsey Borp, Prestine Festival and Theatre Cluid. Dornsey Bob were nominated for their Kindness and Friendship programme, a multifaceted response to the needs of their communities during the pandemic, addressing issues including loneliness, isolation and mental health challenges. It was an outstanding programme of work. Prestine Festival was nominated for Prestine Digital. After the cancellation of the festival, all professional fees were paid and alternative activity was planned, leading to an outstanding exemplar of a digital festival. And finally, Theatre Cluid for Together, an ambitious creative programme working with over a thousand people every week from ages five to 84 years old, ensuring people had a regular outlet to socialize, explore their feelings, hone their crafts and simply have fun. And it is my great pleasure to be able to announce that Theatre Cluid will be the Welsh case study joining the national showcase of the 2020 a Katie's Philanthropy Prize. Together was an ambitious creative programme created in response to the pandemic to encourage and facilitate creativity amongst theatre cluid audiences and in their communities more widely. The theatre continued to deliver their workshops online, reaching up to a thousand people every week, aged five to 84, in a multidisciplinary program that emphasised socialising, sharing of feelings, creativity and simply having fun. New initiatives also flourished in lockdown, including a new partnership with Flincher Social Services that saw Theatre Cluid delivering creative packages to young people in households that were receiving food packages during lockdown. These rainbow boxes were filled with creative delights from seeds to colouring pencils to games and sweet treats. The theatre asked the community to help support this initiative and together ensured that more than 200 rainbow boxes reached families across Flintshire. The judges thought that Theatre Cluid exemplifies the idea of a civic cultural organisation that address the fundamental needs of its audiences, whilst not overlooking the value of and the need for art. Congratulations to Theatre Cluid and to all the nominees in Wales for really tremendous work. So we continue our journey across the UK to the Southwest where there have been stellar initiatives to bring art into the public space, to tell everyday stories of hope and endurance from the community, and to let homes become an extension of museums of regional memory. Caroline, may I request you again to announce the Southwest case study to be included in the National Showcase? It's my complete pleasure, Kartika, of course. And I'd really like to thank our wonderful regional ambassador for the Southwest, and Marie Shillito, who developed the 15 nominations for the region. The three nominations for the Southwest, which are included in the regional showcase, are Knee High, Royal Albert Memorial Museums and Art Gallery, affectionately known as RAM, and the Burton at Byford. Nehi were nominated for their pandemic response programme, which included Coastal Communities Reimagined, Windows on the World, Neon Shadow, 
Walk With Me Stories and Store Cupboard Essentials. It was a fantastic evolution of many of their existing programmes. The Royal Albert Memorial Museum and Art Gallery, or RAM, were nominated for RAM at Home. Looking outwards, being part of the city and its community, helping inspire people to be creative and offering support summarises the approach RAM took at the beginning of the pandemic through a 12 week, week challenge programme. And finally, from the southwest, the Burton at Byford for Seeds of Hope. The Burton took its art outside to cheer people up and tempt them to look online to find out what was going on, including exchanging seeds for artistic contributions from the community. A really inspired response. And it's my great pleasure to be able to announce that RAM are the Southwest case study to be included in the National Showcase. The judges fell in love with RAM at Home, a 12 week artistic challenge series that invited the public to create their very own miniature museum based on RAM's stunning collection. A brand new challenge was set every Friday, such as how to draw a picture of Gerald, Ram's resident giraffe, how to make a Roman centurion from a paintbrush, and how to create a paint a woodpecker on a rock. More than 1,000 people watch the YouTube films, with a further 1,700 people engaging via the museum's website. 500 physical packs were distributed to those unable to access creative resources online in partnership with Exeter City Council Community Trust, excuse me, Exeter City Community Trust and Exeter Community Wellbeing Hub. RAM clearly knows and understands its communities and the power of co-creation. Many congratulations to RAM on really an inspiring programme and to all the nominees in the Southwest for your tremendous work. In the Midlands, organisations focused on a diversity of concerns, from running food donations to supporting adults at risk of isolation and providing material to a collective empowering migrant and ref refugee women. We are in awe of their dedication and resourcefulness. Caroline, over to you for the announcement of the Midlands case study to be included in the National Showcase. Thank you, Kartika. And thanks also to our fantastic regional ambassador responsible for researching the 15 nominations for the Midlands, Karen Dorr. The three nominations comprising the regional showcase in the Midlands are Belgrade Theatre, Craft Space, and The Anstis. Belgrade Theatre were nominated for a broad and ambitious programme which reflected a keen understanding of their audiences and a strong emphasis on social justice. The work presented was a mirror of their values and of their communities. The second nomination in the regional showcase was Craft Space, who were nominated for the breadth of their programming, including We Are Commoners, which highlights actions that are shaping the way communities work together to share and steward commonly owned assets and resources. And finally, the third nomination in the regional showcase was the Anstis. Having only reopened in February 2020, the Anstis rapidly developed a programme of co-creation and support with and for its communities, which included everything from prescription collection to online music engagement opportunities. Congratulations to all three nominees in the showcase. And I am delighted to be able to announce 
craft space as the Midlands case study in the National Showcase. Based in Birmingham, craft space is a charity creating opportunities to see, make and be curious about exceptional contemporary craft. Nominated for the breadth of work carried out since March, alongside its decision to honour pre-existing commissions and financial commitments to artists and freelancers. One notable example is artist Alana Azadeh, whose residency was imagined, reimagined as an online resource of five creative workshops centred around making things to get through difficult times, with each workshop themed to a specific value of ex or experience and including courage, care, connection, loss and emotional repair. Despite its small scale, the work of craft space during COVID was considered by the judges to be an exemplary illustration of how to invest in artists whilst also considering the priorities of audiences. Many congratulations to craft space on its astounding, outstanding achievement and to all the nominations in the Midland National Show in the Midland Showcase. Congratulations to you all on your great work. And now we're going to pause for a moment and catch breath again. And remember why we're all here and to focus on the art. It's my great pleasure to be able to reintroduce Kartika Naya and also fellow poet, Marilyn Hacker. Poet, producer, and librettist Kartika Naya is the author of several books, including Until the Lions, Echoes from Mahabharata, and principal scriptwriter of shows including choreographer Akram Khan's Desh. Naya's closest association as dance enabler has been with Sidi Labi Shakawi. Together they founded his Antwerp-based company Eastman. Marilyn Hacker's 15 books of poems include Blazons, Carcanet, 2019, A Stranger's Mirror, Norton, 2015, and Diaspo Renga, written with Dima K. Shabai, Holland Park Press, 2014. One of her recent translations of French and Francophone poets is Samira Negrucius' The Olive Trees Jazz, Plaides Press, 2020. She lives in Paris. At a time when we have been separated from those we love, these two friends found a way to continue to share their lives and experiences by taking the traditional Japanese collaborative form of poetry, the Renga, where the last words or ideas of the previous poem lead into the next and create a poetic exchange which captures so much of the experience of recent months. I'm delighted they've agreed to read a short extract from it this evening. Kotika, Marilyn, can I ask you to please share with us an extract from your lockdown Renga? Thanks so much, Caroline. Thanks so much for inviting me and for inviting us. And thanks especially to Kotika for including me with the Renga the Karamis. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Marilyn, over to you. Right. Um, uh, we, um, uh, th uh, this uh, little, this sequence starts, uh, well, it's, uh, it starts in May. We, the sequence itself starts started at the very end of March and is indeed still ongoing. A day's pulse measured sometimes in outgoing calls, a voice, but no face accompanying. If I meet a friend in the street, we're both masked. Yesterday, Nahid bus to the Bastille. We'd walk on the port, locked on the opera stairs, eyes, hands, enlivened, masked words. The words unmasked bear serrated edges. 
relapse, says Dr. M.M., referring to her cancer. It is I who flinch from them, wishing I had not just named the demons few have to dispel once more, named them and recounted all their lurid powers at length. 25th May. The length of my life now defines me like my skin color, sex, or faith. It's meant little since age five, judged too young to read and write, I said I could and did. Again, infantilized, should I be locked up so the young can go about their business, getting and spending? May 27th. This business called life got spent, say it, drained, on a glass of milk at Muzaffarpur Nagar railway station. Maksud Alam, house painter in Delhi, banished back to his Bihar by statewide lockdown, by national uncaring. Ran pillar to post to save his ailing Ishak, aged four. The boy's breath ran out sooner than columns to fill in garment drafted forms for sustenance. Same day, same station, a babe tries to wake his dead mother. Police state both died on trains and that kin still get excrotia aid. 30th May. Still point of mourning, discarded masks on the street, riots, detritus, not a morning of roses. Patients on ventilators echo, I can't breathe, or might if they spoke. <clears throat> What's your death sentence? Counterfeit bill? Metro ride? The knee comes down on your throat. Throats, knees, lungs, kidneys, dispensable, encased in black, brown, dullet skin. Ask Bondi based Gabrielle, 14, who might lose an eye. Lawless justice from Castaner's cops. Names too are a kind of hide for Larbi. Their shades litmus and grillings at border control. 3rd June. Borders were, pa were porous with the right passports or a titre de séjour. Danes can go to Norway now, but Swedes can't. When Nahed got her French passport, we drank champagne. She can't see her sister in Stockholm. She's job hunting in Toulouse, going masked to interviews. June 5th. Unmasked interview on Crowdcast. Isle of brief joy, its sole borders, those carved by broadband access, land with no COVID contagion. Where Mina and I speak at the US launch of her book, When I Hit You, speak of worse, fiction, caste killings, murderous husbands, and more. Speak across Boston, London, and Paris with gracious Shuchi, host from Brookline Booksmith, to readers unseen round the world, 8th June 2020. Thank you, Kartika. Thank you, Marilyn. That was so powerful and moving. Thank you both so much for sharing your beautiful lockdown renga with us. And we very much hope to see that in publication before too long, and it will continue to inspire us all, I know. I'd like to now ask my fellow trustee, Libby Penn, to present the next four case studies to join the National Showcase. Libby, over to you. Thank you, Caroline. Before I kick off, let me thank our regional ambassador for Scotland, Alice Samtoy for her tireless work with these and many other organisations. Nominated are Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre, Scottish Ballet, 
and Toon Speak. The first on our shortlist is Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre with Where Are You Dundee? A collective artwork created for and by the people of Dundee where they set 23 video tasks for members of the public to carry out at home, such as learn a dance routine with a big reveal or tell us your very best joke. Next, we have Scottish Ballet, who put forward their work with Health at Hand, a series of bespoke movement and breath videos to support physical and mental health for people working in the NHS and social care services. And finally, we have Toon Speak, Creative Calm, access to digital creativity, which was a programme designed to help young people get online. And the programme removed the financial and technological barriers that prevented them from participating in digital activities, alongside offering encouragement, guidance and the right tools to allow their audience to independently pursue their own creative endeavours. I'm delighted to announce that the National Showcase Organisation for Scotland is Scottish Ballet. The judges selected them not only for the positive nature of the work, but also the reach of this project, which has been viewed over 12,000 times. We found the project to be thoughtful with a clear ambition on the impact that they wanted to create. And we appreciated the idea of focusing on NHS and carers as their core audience many of whom had never been engaged with before. The project has strengthened the organisation's relationship with NHS Scotland and opened up opportunities for future collaboration, as well as driving awareness of the positive impact of dance and movement for physical and mental well-being. Well done, Scottish Ballet. Thank you, Libby. We move to London now and the fabulous entries of the regional showcase, all of which through different media and programs reached out to younger segments of art makers, storytellers, survivors, ensuring they gain the means and platforms to be heard. Libby, uh, may I invite you to announce the London case study in the National Showcase? Thank you. First, thank you to our London Regional Ambassador, Caroline Halls, for her hard work with all of the London organisations. Nominated are Kiln Theatre, Spread the Word, and Theatre Centre with Theatre 503. First, we have Kiln Theatre, who put forward Minding the Gap, a bespoke theatre and creativity programme for young refugees and asylum seekers. They moved their work online during the lockdown with the creation of a brand new series of six 45 minute sessions made available on demand and supported by a private Instagram channels that allowed users to share their work. Next, we have Spread the Words Create, Write, Connect programme, which saw them create a series of Zoom workshops and six week writing courses to engage and occupy their audiences during lockdown. They reached nearly 3000 people, many of whom had never attended a spread the word workshop before. And finally, we have Theatre Centre and Theatre 503 who put forward Imagination Festival, a collaboration between the two organisations which saw them commission 19 writers to create a series of short plays exploring contemporary themes. A nationwide open call then invited the public to record all or part of one of the plays and was supported by how-to videos on acting, filming and directing. And the footage was cut together then and showcased in a three-day festival. I'm delighted to announce the National Showcase Organisation for London is Theatre Centre and Theatre 503. The judges were particularly impressed with their innovative approach to turn an obstacle like the pandemic into an opportunity to celebrate creativity through a virtual festival. We were impressed to see a joint collaboration across two organisations, as well as with a number of freelancers 
to, to deliver such an ambitious project. The project took a fully integrated approach to help both the audience become artists and create a multi-dimensional piece of work that reached over 6,000 people. Well done, Theatre Centre and Theatre 503. Thank you, Libby. Over to Northern Ireland, whose organisations have this in common. A determination that the most vulnerable amongst us should continue to have access to theatre and marvellously inventive uh, solutions to make that happen. Um, Libby, it is my pleasure to ask you to announce the Northern Irish uh, case study um, in thank the National Showcase. Thank you, Kartika. First up, of course, a thank you to our regional ambassador for Northern Ireland, Kate Gwelica. Thank you, Kate. Nominated are Accidental Theatre, Replay Theatre Company and Stage Beyond. Our first case study is Accidental Theatre, who converted their theatre into a TV, a community TV station, Accidental TV, live streaming, plays allowed. This included supporting theatre company Comedia of Errors to reach more than 300 people in nursing homes across Northern Ireland, with one resident describing it as better than the BBC. Next, we have Replay Theatre Company with their production of Coco, a physically distant sensory theatre production that toured to the homes of children and young people with profound and multiple learning dis disabilities that was performed outdoors from the back of a converted transit van. And finally, we have Stage Beyond. Lockdown prompted them to reimagine their weekly workshop programme and upcoming production of Hamlet. Workshops for their 40 members, adults with learning difficulties, moved online and together they collaborated to adapt the stage play into a radio production, Stage Beyond Hamlet for RTE Radio One. And I'm very happy to announce the National Showcase Organisation for Northern Ireland is stage beyond. The judges felt that the work demonstrated an innovative and sustainable approach with, which opened up the doors for future collaborations in a similar vein. We were impressed by such a quick adaptation to a new medium, theatre to radio, to find the most effective way to both engage and reach their audience, an audience that needed to be served during such a challenging time. Well done, stage beyond. Thank you, Libby. Finally, it's the turn of the Southeast um, and the entries of the regional showcase, which have deployed visual art, dance, theater, spoken word across digital and physical platforms, personal and public and online spaces to ensure inclusiveness and sharing delight, even through these difficult times. Libby, may I turn to you once more for the name of the Southeast showcase in the national? Um, case study in the National Showcase. Thank you. Of course, let me thank Claire O'Hara, our regional ambassador in the ambassador in the Southeast for her tireless work with these and many other organizations. Nominated are Bloomin' Arts, Dance East, and Rifco Theatre Company. First up, we have Bloomin' Arts with Creative Islands a safe online space where people with learning disabilities could meet, be creative and stay connected. Weekly dance, voice, drama and art workshops took a creative look at the theme of isolation. Bloomin' Arts also led the way in sharing their learning with other arts and disability focused organisations in the region, encouraging more of them to open their doors virtually. Next up, we have Dance East, who moved the breadth of their work online to help maintain their relationship with their audiences and participants. They launched, launched a number of initiatives, including Digital Dance House, a mixed program of YouTube and live Zoom classes, and Let's Move, a national dance summer school presented with The Place. And they also have a new project in the works currently. Finally, we have Rifco Theatre Company. The Desi Lockdown series was born from an open call commissioning strand for British South Asian artists 
to create a two minute film about their experiences of lockdown. Each film in the series explores a different aspect of the pandemic experience, from the challenges of lockdown in an intergenerational household to the attempts to make your own version of your mom's favorite dish. And this was communicated through drama, comedy and spoken word creations. So finally, I'm pleased to announce the National Showcase Organization for the Southeast is Rithco Theatre Company. The judges were impressed by both the creativity of the idea and the reach of the output. The digital offer attracted more than 5,000 followers on Facebook, with Mushy, lyrically speaking, garnering over 90,000 views. The judges recognised a culturally sensitive approach of this project, bringing their audiences' lives to life and turning their stories into an art form. The online response to these vibrant projects makes apparent their impact. Well done, Rithco Theatre Company. Thank you, Libby. That concludes our National Showcase for 2020. Congratulations to all the nominated organisations for the truly extraordinary work you have been doing in your communities, onwards and upwards. Thank you, Kartika. And just to echo your words, what an inspiration you all are to us. Thank you for your untiring, dedicated work during this time, not only looking back, but looking forward. Thank you for making a difference to your communities and showing the value and impact of art. It's so appreciated. And so I just simply have to say congratulations to the eight organizations in our national showcase, 20 stories high, Theatre Cluid, Royal Albert Mu Memorial Museum and Arts Gallery, Craft Space, Scottish Ballet, Theatre Centre and Theatre 503, Stage Beyond and Rithco Theatre Company. You are our outstanding eight organisations who are shining a light for culture across the UK. Congratulations to you all and keep going. So that just leaves me to say, thank you Kartika, thank you Libby, thank you Sarah, my co-host this evening, and thank you Marilyn Hacker as well for that really beautiful lockdown renga from you both. Thank you our prize ambassadors, all of the nominated organisations, our sponsors, Akates Philanthropy Limited, our supporters, the Paul Hamlin Foundation, and in particular, Moira Sinclair and Rajesh Koshfer. Our venue partners home, the support of Bop Consulting, Spectrix, and our fantastic team, Georgia, Jen, Kyle, Caroline, Rose, and Steve the trustees of the foundation. Thank you all. Good night, take care, stay safe.